One small step for man, that's another small step for man. This man takes small steps. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Mm, thank you to Grundle Stiltskin. Grundle Stiltskin for that incredible catchphrase submission. And speaking of incredible, welcome to an incredible episode of Comedy Bang Bang. That's right. We are now tip deep in Febby Debbie, uh, first Monday of Febby Debbie, <laughs> uh, and, uh, 2021. I tell you, I was thinking about this. The 2010s were awesome for me. 2020s <laughs> have been <laughs> total shit at this point, but we hope that you're having a, a, a good time at least, uh, on this Monday in Febby Debbie. And, uh, my name is Scott Ackerman. And we have an incredible show coming up. A little later, we have uh, a plumber, uh, and we also have a world-renowned therapist will be on the show. So, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know if there's any crossover there, whether the therapist can, uh, you know, help the plumber with whatever uh, his or her issues are, uh, but uh, we'll find that out. But uh, before we get to uh, those guests, uh, I do want to bring on uh he's been on the show before and to be quite frank i do not remember uh how to describe him he's a person he certainly is a person he's humanoid he is made up of molecules and uh uh skin blood uh, uh bile <laughs> semen <laughs> the rest <laughs> boy the, the rest of the body gets uh, professor mary ann status there the rest <laughs> Um, DNA certainly is, is, uh, residing within his body, but, uh, he's our old friend and, uh, I, I don't even know if he has a job, so I won't even presume to say, uh, uh, what his occupation is, but our old friend, Randy Snuts is here. Hello, Randy. How's it going, Scott? Thanks for putting all that respect <laughs> on my name. <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, I would, I would, uh, do nothing less when it comes to our old friend, Randy Snuts. Uh, Randy remind our viewers i why i'm talking to you who are you again so i'm just like a laid-back chill dude who <laughs> likes to mix it up with my pals um right i've been on i've been on the show like five times before so this i is know I, I remember talking to you but i don't i i guess I, I you know this is a this is an interview show this is of course humanities podcast uh formerly known as the show where we talk to interesting people and you are sort of interesting but i'm wondering why a new listener would be interested in i mean uh, most of our our guests have something unique about them unique uh -huh. new york yep. uh and uh you know you can say like last week we had a bus accident victim you That's know it's awesome. like oh not everyone in the world has you know, survived a bus accident but what is it about you why did i why did i first talk to you in the first place so the first time that you talked to me i uh was because i worked at your favorite restaurant dodomio's <laughs> and uh i used to oh, fill right. the i used to fill the urinals with ice <laughs> right and the the reason that, was I, that your one job that was my one job at Dodomio's, um, but I got fired for filling it with ice while people were peeing. <laughs> it seems seems to be a hard job to fuck up in that way, but um, but you did it. Yep, I'd be like, excuse me, and then I'd pour the ice into sure, their. Sure, no, we we know, yeah, we know yeah, exactly how into how. their pee stream. And the fun thing about peeing on ice is you get to watch it melt, and it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Were you trying to do that so it would melt quicker so you would have more to do so there would be more reason to keep you on the payroll? Yeah, exactly. We worked on commission. You'd get paid <laughs> for however much ice you got melted by people's pee. <laughs> <laughs> how would they quantify that? How would, <laughs> how, I, I don't know how they would measure it. But So so uh, I, I used to see you over at Adomio's. Yep. And w did we strike up a conversation there and I said, come on the show? Is that what happened? Yeah, probably. I mean, I struck up conversation with you a ton of times, and you ignored me like John Hamm ignores people at, um, I don't know, whatever booth he's sitting in at Little Dom's. <laughs> That's giving away some secrets there. <laughs> What's up, Hammer? Don't hurt him. And he'd be like, get, get the fuck away from my table. Oh, please, Hammer, don't hurt him. Boy, have a heart, Hammer. Look at your heart, Hammer. Please don't hurt him. He has kids. Um... So you were on the show, and I, I found your lifestyle to be very intriguing. Essentially, as you described it, you hang out and chill with your buddies, right? <laughs> That's true. And I tried to avoid needless drama and scandal through uh, the exploits of my girlfriend, who's a known provocateur, Carissa. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Carissa. Um, what, so you're still with Carissa. Is that is that true or is that false or uh, uh, something in between? Currently, Carissa and I are on a break because she kept breaking quarantine. 
<laughs> no, what was she doing? I mean, she was just trying to live her best life while everyone else was staying at home and trying to keep people safe. But, you know, what else could you expect from a duplicitous, devious person like Carissa? <laughs> That's right. You uh, for, for our new listeners, how long have you been with Carissa? Oh, uh, right now it's probably going on like seven or eight years. Okay. And what was it two years ago? Uh, probably, well, let's see, seven or eight minus two, uh, five or six years. <laughs> okay. I just, I don't know why you said right now as if like, am I asking at some point in the past or the future? No, well, I'm asking right now. You know, when like one person in a relationship has like a hard start time for the relationship, but the other sure. person is like, I didn't think I was serious for the first four months. Sure. Okay. So you, you, what was, what was uh, your first date though? Or your first encounter? Uh, our first encounter was hanging out in the backyard of my friend, Mark Padovano's house. Okay. Was he having a party or were, did you guys just hop the fence or what? Uh, how did this backyard uh, meet, meet up take place? He made flyers for what's known as a bags tournament. And we, do you know the game bags? I don't know the game bags. Is it uh, similar to, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? Donkey Kong? No. What am I thinking of? The, the cornhole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's cornhole for people that live outside of Ohio. Oh, okay. So it's okay. Got it. So you were having a bags tournament. Yeah, we we're having a bags tournament and um, doing uh, doing bong, beer bongs off of. Uh, Do they Mark call those Pat rips beer bong rips? Yeah, beer bong rips. Oh, mm -hmm. so we were doing beer bong rips. He he lives in a one floor house, so the beer bong started on the roof, and then people would pour multiple beers, and we'd be doing rips. And then if you survived the rips, we were doing whippets. And that's when Carissa walked in the back and I had kind of a dream weaver moment. And then I passed out. Oh, OK. So you did, did you pass out from uh, uh, seeing her or, or the whippets or what exactly happened? Most likely the, the whippets, because she's probably like a seven and a half. <laughs> OK. And a seven and a half in what city? Uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, OK. So uh, a one out here, maybe. Ouch. Goddamn. <laughs> Coastal elite laying it down. Uh, so, but a seven and a half out there. That you, Wow. Amazing. And then when you woke up and you opened your eyes, was she there or was it a different day and your boys were there? It was a different day and my boys were there. And they were like, you made quite an impression because she loves tragic cases. And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> this could spell doom for Randy. And it D-O-O-M. <laughs> D-O-O-M. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and then when did you actually get together with Carissa? Probably like a week later. Um, okay. Yeah, a week. So that's later. not going to affect the seven or or eight year thing. Just a week. Yeah, but I mean, a week later we hooked up. But then, like four months later, she's like, "Like, why are you acting this way? We've been dating for four months." And I was like, "Dafuk." <laughs> 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 so you didn't know that you were exclusive at this point no not at all i mean i wasn't seeing anyone else because my prospects were dim <laughs> so so it was not that hard for you to say okay well let's keep it exclusive from this moment on that's right so carissa got the exclusive and then we've been like seeing each other ever since but it's been filled with drama that's shenanigans right. Uh, list off some of the drama we've talked about a little bit of it on previous episodes, but remind us what what, what exact? I mean, Carissa is scandalous, as you say. Yeah, absolutely scandalous, duplicitous, devious as hell. Right, and what are the things that she's done? Uh, she poured tequila on my Xbox One and set it on fire. <laughs> That's a combustible alcohol tequila. <laughs> she does a really good impression of me, and she called my mom and said I was in the hospital with lupus. <laughs> what does her impression sound like? Can you do an impression of her doing an impression of you? Yeah, so it sounds like this. So this this was what she she called my mom and she was like, "Hey mom, it's me, Randy. I'm in the hospital with lupus again." Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, it sounds like you you were pinching your nose to do that. Does she have some sort of uh, uh, is her are her nasal cavities sort of filled up or why why the pinched nose? All the opposite. She blew out her septum doing cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just free and clear in there. Easy breezy. Yep. Easy breezy. But it kind of collapsed in on itself. It's a oh, real, OK. It's a real George W. Bush situation. Is that what took her down from a 10 to a seven and a half? Yeah, probably her collapsed septum. OK, so what took her down from a one and a quarter to a one out here? I'm just doing I'm doing the math. <laughs> God damn. These left coast elitists <laughs> Shit, shitting all over the heartland. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm just saying it's a different scale. That's all. So uh, uh, so 
you've been with her for quite a number of years, and she's done all these things to you. And has she flirted with your boys? I can't recall if there. Yeah, was some- it's nonstop flirtation with my boys. You know, it's always like she because she tries to keep me jealous. She thinks that I'm my best self when I'm just like filled with rage and jealousy and I'm trying to win her back. Do you agree with that assessment? I mean, it drives me freaking crazy. And then I go like buy her gifts and stuff. So, yeah. (laughs) Okay. So, yeah. All right. And it turns me into a voracious lover. Oh, okay, great. Well, I don't, I don't know that we need too many details about that. But, well, let uh, me give you a couple. Usually, okay. I'm just trying to get the job done. But when I'm filled with jealous rage, I'm hitting all the bases. <laughs> Wait, first, so, so first base, so, a kiss. Second base, some sure. tongue. Third base, hands groping consensually, and then I, ho- home base, the hitting the dinger. I, I maybe that's uh, uh, the Sheboygan. <laughs> home run but uh out here i think third uh, first base is the kiss second yeah. base is the hands oh uh, uh the th- third base is something else uh what is it? What is well it? It, it's everything but if you know what i mean I, 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 give me the deets i need this stuff <laughs> i gotta go back to the heartland and use this information <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying that uh uh so so you're kissing her first when when she's wronged you and then you're adding the tongue, you're going through all the steps. You're running around the bases. Yeah, absolutely. Out of respect. You know, you're high fiving the first base coach, the third base coach. Uh huh. Yep. I'm doing the safe sign to the ref at second base <laughs> when I slip the tongue in. <laughs> and what is that in the metaphor exactly? <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of like a power move where you're kissing someone and then you add the tongue and then you take your hands away from the person that you're kissing okay. and they're like dang no hands <laughs> okay so that's the safe sign to the ref got it uh-huh. um and then it uh when once you cross home plate are all your boys coming out and you're high-fiving them and no it takes me probably like five minutes after i've ejaculated to calm down is that what you mean uh, to calm down oh really what did you so mean you, so you're hyped up you're you're uh what are you pacing around the room <laughs> what's going on no all my brain cells have evacuated my body and i need five minutes to remember who the hell my name my oh, okay so you're you're a blank slate oh absolutely i'm a clean slate you're, D- you're tabula Cardi. rasa yep wow um so so we we've established then what you and carissa um have been up to so now you guys are on a break and how did that come about it came about because she kept breaking quarantine and then we'd come back and I'd be like, so where were you over the last eight hours? And she'd be like, I was here. I was here. I was here. I was doing shots with my girls. I was at another like, you know, bachelorette party. Um, I was visiting some of my uh, relatives who are near do wells. <laughs> so, uh, so you don't like her relatives. You her. uh yeah, and hopefully a lot of them end up in jail because they stormed the Capitol for sure. <laughs> oh, really? So she's, okay, her relatives are of that persuasion. <laughs> Absolutely. They tried to stop the steal, and I was not having it. <laughs> you wanted the steal. Huh? No. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn this around on me. <laughs> You're okay with the steal. No, I'm not okay with the steal. I respect the Constitution. I wanted a peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> okay. And that's what you got, isn't it, at the end of the day? At the I, end of one day. At the end of January the 6th, no. <laughs> but at the end of a different day, January the 20th, yes, we did. Yep, absolutely. We shan't get into those details. <laughs> <laughs> so how did she take the news? I mean, were you guys quarantining together? She took it lying down because I said it while she was asleep, and then I ran out with all my stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did you leave her a note? Did she know where you went? I texted her later. Yeah. Okay. Then that, yeah, that's that's the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could go into detail about what the text was, but it was pretty brief. The thing is, you don't want to awaken a sleeping beast, and in this metaphor, Carissa is the beast. Sure. And the sleep and is sleep. She was sleeping. Yeah. And not wanting to wake her is not wanting to wake her. So everything but the beast. Yeah, He's a one to one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I got it. Yeah, I packed a duffel bag full of my stuff and then a second duffel bag full of like some things for my quarantine hobbies and some like puzzles and games and things. So now where are you living? Uh, at my friend Mark Padavano's house. Oh, with the backyard where you first met. I mean, that's got to be bittersweet. Yeah, he's a good friend. Yeah, what's he up to during the quarantine? Mm, uh, he mostly shit posts online. He's kind of a libertarian. <laughs> okay, but a great friend. <laughs> yeah, a great friend. Blood is thicker than water. 
Sure. Um, and uh, he's OK with you, even though uh, technically you didn't quarantine for two weeks before coming into his residence. He's OK with you staying over there. No, I stayed in my car outside his place for two weeks and then I came inside. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Um, it wasn't great cause it was kind of cold outside and, yeah. uh, you know, anytime I had to shower before going to work, he would kind of hose me down in his backyard <laughs> from a distance. Yeah. From, yeah. At, at least six feet. Wow. Okay. So and hose you down naked or are you, uh, uh, you know, in clothes while he does this that have to dry then or what? Yeah. I was in either black or brown boxers cause I'm like, I'm not one of those guys who's like, Hey guy, Hey gang, let's go shower together after the big game. Sure. Wait, what? <laughs> well, you know how after the big game, a lot of guys are like, let's pile into the shower, you know? What, not, what big game are we talking? Like watching someone <laughs> watching a big game like the Super Bowl and then you shower with your friends or, or are you playing a game? Is this all West Coast elitist thing? Like, hey, <laughs> what a great Super Bowl. Let's get in the shower, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm wondering the, about you. No, I meant like a sports game, like, you know, like in high school, like let's hit the shower. I see. Or, yeah. And is this a metaphor like what we were talking about before? No, this is real. I just imagine when I was growing up, I just never wanted to get in the shower with guys. What is hard about this? Okay, so you you never showered with guys from in PE classes, physical education, of course, uh, throughout your junior high and high school experience. Uh, yes, correct. And why is that? Are you ashamed of your body? Or are you or you or do you just think it's weird like I do that we're forcing junior high and high school students to be naked together? column a and column b <laughs> i'm catholic. It's strange isn't it yeah i mean if you're catholic why wouldn't you have shame about your body Zing. sure so you are catholic yeah absolutely okay how strict are you how 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 religious are you on a scale of uh you know uh zero being an atheist 10 being the pope okay well by west coast elite standards i'm probably 10 the pope uh, okay. By Heartland standards, I'm probably like a three and a half. Oh, okay. Wow. It goes the other way. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, your good friend, Mark, uh, he's hosing you down, and but now you're in there with him. And Carissa, she tried to contact you? Yeah, absolutely. She comes by and she like knocks on the door and she tries to go around back and like she scaled the fence once and we had to hose her down until she left. <laughs> It's a mess because, like, you know, as much as I complain about Carissa, she's got it bad for me. Oh, really? Yeah. So it, it's almost like the shoe is on the other foot. Um, you know, if you only own one shoe, that's a terrible problem to have. So you got to keep switching feet. But, uh, you know, you're usually chasing her and uh, buying her presents whenever she is mad and, and undergoes the scandalous behavior. And suddenly you're the one that's scandalous in a way. I mean, to her, yeah. I've, the, t the tables have finally turned on Carissa, and now she knows what it feels like to like be at the mercy of someone who's duplicitous and uh, not putting up with her crap anymore. That's right. I mean, you were duplicitous in the way of you just snuck out the back, Jack, without you know, ever alerting her to the fact that you were leaving. I mean, that's uh, kind of cowardly, I have to say. What? If you had met Carissa, you would never say that escaping her clutches is cowardly. You'd say it's heroic and brave. <laughs> I want her to come on the show at some point. Yeah, okay. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay. I, I, who knows if you guys are even getting back together. But Yeah, if we get back together, maybe she'll come on the show, and then it'll be exhibit A for how duplicitous she can be. Right. Uh, do you ever – I mean, what are the chances you get back together with her? I mean, at this point, you know. I mean, at, at this point, it's a health and safety concern for you. Yeah, exactly. I would say I would get back together with Carissa if, um, number one, she's very nice to me. Uh, <laughs> number two, I get horny enough. And number three, at least 80% of her family that stormed the Capitol goes to prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one and two, I think, are going to happen. I'm not, yeah. not, sure, about, <laughs> not sure about three. <laughs> amen, to, amen to what you just said, brother. <laughs> I bet 20% of her family goes to jail and one and two definitely happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think two is happening right now, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm not going to pan the camera down, but <laughs> you know it. Uh, well, I, I wish you luck with Carissa. I mean, uh, a, a romance like that that spanned, what, five episodes you've been on? I mean, uh, our, our audiences want to know that uh, you crazy kids will get it back together. We will. But in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of things. I've been like sh brushing up on a lot of hobbies. I just got into cooking banana bread. Oh, how's that going? <laughs> Pretty great. Number one pandemic hobby. Am I right? 
That's right. Yeah. And uh, so, but you've tasted the bread that you've made? Oh, yeah. You got to taste everything that you make, Scott. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that's that's third base, I isn't think, it? I think number two is happening right now. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Your, your voice got very sultry when you said that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you look at a bunch of nasty bananas, it's time to make that bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess so. I don't know that I want to. If wanna, you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. I don't know that I want to know what you mean. Uh, we'll just leave it there. So, uh, uh, didn't you at one point get uh, arrested at a liquor store? Uh, no, I got banned. I got banned from working at the convenience store of a gas station because I stole products and, uh, and got caught by yelling yoink. That's right. Every time you would steal something, you would say yoink. You yoink. yelled it though. You, you it, before you would, you told us that you would just set it under your breath and you said it slightly too loud one time to yeah. where the owner heard you, but you were yelling. Well, yeah. I mean, the older you get, the bolder you get. So <laughs> when I started stealing, I was younger and I was whispering. And then the older I got, the more I'd be like, yoink. So in that case, you were okay with the steal. Yeah. Yeah. But then the owner of the gas station, he's the one who stopped that steal. <laughs> okay. right. I see what you're doing here. You're trying to confuse the narratives and uh, <laughs> rehabilitate some of these unsavory characters. Um, so do you have a job? I mean, you haven't been working, right? I mean, uh, if, if, if you've been that tight on quarantine. Yeah, no, I've been working from home. Um, doing what I, though? Well, initially I was helping Mark Padovano with his website. Uh, oh, what's his with, website? <laughs> what kind of website does he have? <laughs> he, he has a, he has a website that, that makes online ads for, uh, sports websites that redirects people to draftkings.com. Okay, so if I'm getting this right, you're on a different sports website, like yeah. say uh, Barstool Sports or something like that. You click on an ad that then takes you to DraftKings.com. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's I not mean, an ad for DraftKings.com. No, it could be an ad for like, are you are you concerned about your elderly parents? And you'd be like, oh, I'll <laughs> click on this, and it's like DraftKings.com. There goes my afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're making the ads. So how do how do you you're essentially tricking people into clicking on things? It's a trick click. I so, wouldn't say it's a trick click. I'd say it's targeted marketing research that <laughs> hits at people's deepest fears. Okay. So what are the types of things? All right. Well, definitely worrying about your elderly parents. Sure. Uh, uh, then sometimes we'll we'll use the Chase Bank logo and we'll be like, uh oh, something's happening with your account, and people will be like, huh? And they'll click on that and they'll be like. Oh, oh my God! I need to bet on this. I need to bet on this <laughs> December Minnesota Timberwolves versus Sacramento Kings game ASAP. <laughs> what about the one about uh, the uh, uh, cops hate this one trick to get you out of a DUI? <laughs> Do you make those? <laughs> yeah, that was one of Mark Padovano's first ones. Along, oh, okay. along with a picture of a fat guy and then the picture of that guy skinny, and he'd say, "This guy lost 145 pounds, and here's why trainers hate him." <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Padovano is like a pioneer in this field. Oh, yeah. He's a devious guy. He has no scruples or morals. So he's devious as well. I mean, he and Carissa would be perfect for each other. Yeah, but he's he's loyal to me to a fault because we're childhood friends and we've never let sexuality get in the way. <laughs> okay. So he's never uh, gotten sloppy seconds off something you've been with or vice versa. Well, not with me. I mean, he's hooked up with Carissa a ton of times. Every time what? we're on a break. Yeah. Every time we're on a break, he hooks up with her. Wait. So he, I mean, to me, that violates the bro code. Oh, man, you're right. <laughs> I mean, he's not loyal to you. To, to a, In fact, I wonder if he isn't with her when you're not on a break. And then suddenly when the you're on a break, veil is lifted. You know, he's able to keep it out in the open. Oh, no. Scott, don't do this to me right now. I'm going <laughs> to start mean, spiraling on this podcast. You haven't thought about any of these issues? No. I'm just happy to have a friend during quarantine. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I, I, how, how much is Mark uh, paying you to do this kind of work? I got like, I get $15 an hour. Oh, okay. How many hours does it take? <laughs> I mean, sometimes it takes 12, 13 hours a day. Wow. I mean, this is I'm not like, a bad gig. I'm making really good money right now. Every time I feel insecure, I'm like, hey, that would make a pretty good ad to get someone to click trick. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe he's paying you just to keep you occupied. Maybe it's worth the $150 to him, you know? I mean, you know, it's better than paying for it the other way. Dang. 
This is devastating, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to bring this kind of stuff up to you, but how many times has Mark uh, Petavano has he been with Carissa? How like in the past? Or the future? I don't. I don't know why you keep asking this. <laughs> yes, are are we talking about the present? Is he with her right now? Yes, in the fucking past. <laughs> Dang! I knew I'd get shit on on this podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. I do every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's it's just my nature to 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 push back on people. I I, I maybe I was hurt myself. I apologize. I shouldn't. Yeah, I shouldn't lash okay. out at you. You're naughty by nature. <laughs> And you're naughty by nurture. You were raised okay. that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I'm I'm Catholic. We're all naughty by nurture. <laughs> <laughs> so so how many times in the past then? I mean, I break up with Carissa at least three times a year, and Mark's been with her every single time. So wow, seven or eight times time. Uh, seven or seven eight, eight time, years. Seven or eight years times three is twenty-one, 21 to, to twenty-four times. times. Yeah, and uh, I mean that's a uh, and and he doesn't have a girlfriend or a wife, Mark. Uh-uh, he's famously celibate. <laughs> so celibate? Yeah. Other than when he's with her. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. I don't know. This is very fishy. Was he surprised to see you when you came came by the house and slept in, his, in your car outside his house for two weeks? Yeah, he was. Uh, his words exactly were, Randy, Dafuk, what are you doing here? <laughs> That's an exact quote. <laughs> uh, you can quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, Randy, I, I look, uh, I love talking to you. I'm glad you came by. I'm sorry that you, you seem down. Uh, I didn't mean to, you know, exacerbate that. No, it's all right. I mean, this kind of played out the same way that all my other appearances on this have played out a healthy amount of disrespect. And then by the end, we're good buddies. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's why you keep coming back. <laughs> Absolutely. Once a year, baby, put it in the books. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Let's schedule 2022 while we're at it. It's like going to the dentist. Hey, do you want to schedule your <laughs> cleaning for a year from now? <laughs> Um, well, uh, we do have to take a break at this point. Uh, we still have much more show though. Uh, we do have a therapist and God, Randy, out of anyone I know, you could use a therapist. <laughs> yeah. Amen uh, to that. <laughs> uh, and she is world renowned. So that is, uh, exciting. We also have a plumber coming up on the show and out of anyone I know, Randy, you could use a plumber. <laughs> No kidding. The depths. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> That's right. All right. We are going to come right back. We'll be right back with more Randy Snuts, more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> I'm Kevin Hart, and you don't want to miss my new show, Inside Jokes, where I have the opportunity to talk to comedians in ways that I've never been able to talk to them before. Why? Well, because I believe that we're the most interesting people on the planet. Intimate conversations are not the way that you think it. I'm not talking about nasty talk. I'm talking about real talk, raw talk with great dialogue. Inside Jokes is about jumping into the minds of our amazing comedians. Inside Jokes is available now on Stitcher. Just tap the image on your screen and add it to your favorites. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back. Uh, Randy Snuts is here. Uh, uh, the formerly known as the yo the Yoinker, is that uh, safe to say? The little Yoinker. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's good? I'm here to Yoink. <laughs> Um, and uh, currently staying over at Ma uh, Mike Padovano. So where does he live? Mark Padovano. Yeah, Mark Padovano. Oh, he lives about three blocks away from Carissa and I's old place. Oh, okay, great. Good to know. Uh, and uh, oh, uh, coming up a little later, we have a uh, world-renowned therapist. So that's very exciting. But uh, before we get to her, let's get to uh, our next guest. He is, I already uh, uh, said he's a plumber, but apparently he is commonly known as the no-stank plumber. Please welcome Mike Ruby. Hello, Scott. It's me, Mike Ruby, the no stank plumber, Scott. How are you? I am very good. It's very good to have you on the show. I, I'm so glad to be here to be advertising on your show. Uh, I don't know I, that you're advertising as much as you're on the show. I'm going to no, talk to you if we... A if Mike we, Ruby it, appearance is an advertisement. Do you understand me, Scott? Do we need to hashtag this as ad then right now? Or Yeah, yeah. We should probably do a quick ad read. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Well, I was about to have a dinner party only to discover my bathroom was covered in shit. So I called this plumber named Randy and boy, did he give me the runaround. <laughs> he was talking about estimates and he couldn't guarantee his price. But then I called Mike Ruby. 
Hi, it's me, Mike Ruby, the no stank plumber, and I guarantee I will fix any bathroom situation with zero stank. We're not going to give you the runaround on whether it's going to stank or not. It's not. And it's the Mike Ruby guarantee. Hashtag no stank. <laughs> Hashtag ad, of course, as well. Wow. Uh, incredible. And so, uh, you, so you like how I kind of Michael Winslow that I do all the voices. I do the sound effects. The yeah. Stuff. I don't know that you were fooling anyone with it. Well, I could tell it was you, but just putting on a little bit of falsetto. Uh, but I don't uh, know what you're talking about. That was sort of like a fully fledged character. I was sort I of. I don't like, know. Usually, like I've seen Michael Winslow in person, and you know when he does the helicopter, you'll you'll be looking at the sky, going, "Is there a helicopter right there, above so me?" So you weren't looking around, going, "Is there a woman who's having a dinner party who's who needs a plumber?" You weren't thinking that. Not really. No, I was thinking, "Oh, Mike's doing a funny voice," but that's okay. I mean, yeah, it, you know, I, I just I just think comparing yourself to Michael Winslow that's a high bar that I don't necess- think necessarily you cleared. Well, you know, you didn't hear my flush sound, so. I don't know why you would, you know, go ahead and judge. You didn't hear my flush sound, so. I mean, I was I, pretty I, fooled. I Like, <laughs> I thought there were multiple people in the room, and I ran to the bathroom to see if the toilet was stanky. <laughs> he got up and, sp- like, his hat spun around in a circle yeah. as he ran to the bathroom. You may have missed it then, Randy. Uh, 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 Mike Ruby over here was talking about a uh, plumber named Randy that oh, uh, mm-hmm. this client called. Yeah, but that's yeah, not you, right? Because Randy's sort of a silly name. You know, you think about Randy, you're like, oh, this guy probably smells. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so you agree with him, Randy? I mean, I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, it's short for Randall. and you uh, That's not a name to be trusted. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, it could be short for Brandy, couldn't it? Yeah, Bra- yeah Brandy, a fine girl. <laughs> <laughs> sure, what a good wife she would be. Ooh, my wife, yeah. my lover, my lady, and the toilet stank. <laughs> you so, guys doing a song. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We know the song. I, we probably know more than, than, than that to the song, but we're yeah, not prob- going to get probably, into it. Probably, but we're not going to get into Let's it. Let's not at get this into point. the weeds. So, Mike, you, uh, yeah. you promise in your commercial that it's not going to be stank. What is oh, not yes, going to be stank? What do you mean? The, the, because uh, this woman in the commercial, uh, and I'm being generous when I say that. You mean? Whoa, 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 Rand- Randy, lady. you took off again. <laughs> don't worry, Randy, don't worry. It's me, it's me, it's me. Oh, okay. It sounded like a sexy lady was in my bathroom. So uh, this woman, she, yeah. what, a, what a strange experience for her to walk into her bathroom and it's covered in shit and she had no idea. Yeah, so it's someone sort of a worst case scenario. You know? Someone else's then or someone... That's a great question, Scott. You know, those aren't the kind of things I get into. For me, Which, it's yeah. just... You, you don't know, care why. I don't care. I don't care what it is. If you want me to deal with your shitty bathroom situation and you want it to not smell, you got to call Mike Ruby, baby. So what's not smelling about? Do you clean up the shit that's already there? Do you want me to walk there? you through my patented, uh, I don't know how many steps, maybe nine step process? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Nine steps. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you chose the number. <laughs> And you didn't go double digits, which I respect. (laughs) Sometimes, Scott, sometimes you over, you you say it's like a 30 step process. Then you're fucking locked in on coming up with 30 steps. Sure. No, under promise and over deliver. So, Scott, first things first, I got to start at my home, Scott. So you, okay. Yeah. That's, that's where the process starts is you're at your house. Somebody gives me a call. They say my bathroom's covered in shit. Don't worry about it, Randy. That's just me. So, so receiving the call is the the first step. Okay. I, okay. Oh, we're gonna answer the that. call as the lady Ghostbusters. That's said. gonna be part of the steps. Okay, hold on. Let me recalculate. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, 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 seven. I think we're at an eleven-step process. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So I answer the call, and then step two: hop in the shower. Okay. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're not stanky when you go over there. The first step to being a non-stank plumber, Scott, is to make sure you are not bringing any stank into the stank situation, Scott. You don't want any additional stank in there. So I don't do you want rub no your- additional stank. <laughs> it's wow, of that, you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. That is from one of our radio ads. Wow. Uh, then I do do all the voices, of course, like Michael Winslow. But yes, so I do so- shower. You shower, do you rub yourself with soap, essential oh, oils? So uh, I got a Garnet, Fu- Garnet Fructis in there. I got, I got uh, Paul Mitchell shampoos and conditioners, you know, Scott. Mm. And then I, I also use Tom's of Maine bar soap, Scott. Uh, I don't know about that. I think I would switch out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just for exfoliation, Scott. I get okay. that real. I get that in the crack. I, got, I, I go deep, deep, deep exfoliation and I, I wash my hair a couple times. 
Okay. As you can see, I have a flowing mane of hair. <laughs> yeah, it is long. I didn't want to say, but it, you know, on the Zoom, it looks like, uh, is that down to your uh, butthole? Or right how, now, how? it's down to my butthole because I'm sitting. But when I stand, it's right above my little butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, when so, you, but when you have this much hair, Scott, you got to make sure you're clean. So, and, and you know, as a, as a plumber who showers all the time, you could tell that my hair is healthy, no split ends. Yeah. Like, you know, if I were you, I would be like a cyclist. I would, I would shave my body entirely so that there is no... Never any doubt that I would be stankless. You would think that that Scott is a is a good thing, but actually it's not, Scott. Hmm. Okay. It's true. It's true. The more you shave yourself, the stankier you get. Thank you. Snuts gets it. Once you shave, you start releasing some of the like really stanky understin, like the things that get baked into your skin as you sleep. You know, you shave. It's almost like poking at a dead horse. You know. Oh, okay. I thought it would be trapped in in a beard or in the hair, but no, it just you releases the that, toxins. Scott. Well, then you just got you got to clean that beard. So I brush my beard over a hundred times before I leave the shower. By the way, your beard is super long too. Is that that's down by the pee hole? I see. So my beard is not only on the ground; it extends like three feet in front of me. Oh wow! So this is like a Princess Diana in reverse. It's pre- It's like a Princess Diana in reverse. I don't even know what that means, man. <laughs> she had a train when she got married that was super oh, long. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a wedding train, but in reverse. I love that. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> okay, okay, so that's step two. All right, step three. Okay, I drive there. Now, this is a this is a really important part. I get in my car. I put up all the windows. There's a lot of mini steps within this <laughs> step, it sounds steps. like. <laughs> so if we were doing like an outline, you know, this was like A, and now we're down at the I section where it's like, oh, you know, right, indented yeah. a little more. I, why, I, why do the windows go up? Because you don't want any of the outside air? I can't air have to... any outside smells, Scott. So sure. not only does the window go up, but I do spray heavy chemicals inside the car as I drive. <laughs> okay. So it smells like that new car kind of thing? Uh, new car smell, osium, bleach, uh, for <laughs> Breeze. I spray it all, Scott. And and the windows are up, and I, I keep from passing out by holding a small cloth over my face. Okay. Wow. Great. Counterintuitive, but that seems to work. It is counterintuitive <laughs> because that is sort of the chloroform, sort of the, the way you chloroform somebody. But if you want to make sure that you don't get chloroform, you just have a clean cloth. I so, see. Mike, like, what's like, what is the smell uh, of all those things combined to like make you smell like once you step outside of the car? I call it the Mike Ruby signature smell. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> and it is, it's, it's trademarked, and and I'll tell you, it, it's not over yet because when I get out of the car, the final step is I take off all my clothes and spray myself head to toe with Axe body spray. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this step four then at this we point? We are at step four. <laughs> okay, great. We All right, the so call, we shower, we exfoliate, we shower, and sure. then we drive there. And drive we, there, which has a lot of mini steps of the rolling of the windows, steps. stepping out of the car, etc. And now we have sprayed the body with Axe body spray, and now okay. we are at the we are at the customer's home, Scott. So, so no one is smelling the Mike Ruby signature <laughs> smell other than you, because Not the, yet. <laughs> because once you get to the doorstep. It's Axe body spray all the way. Well, the reason I do that, Scott, is I want to train my nose to be, you know, it's it's trained for a good smell. So any bad smell, I'm going to pick it out immediately when I oh, walk into the house. Okay. Do you have a... Uh, 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 do you have nasal cavities a lot like Carissa there where they're just blown out and you can smell everything? Oh, yeah. I did what they call a cocaine simulation with pixie sticks in order to blow out my, my septum so that I could smell <laughs> okay. better, Scott. Okay, because you you're you a, a strict uh, don't do drugs. Oh, I will never do drugs, Scott. I signed that D.A.R.E. contract and I will never go back on that. <laughs> when you were 13. I was 13, but I was still, you know, my parents were there, so they did agree if it was legally binding. So. <laughs> okay, wow. Please. Okay, so we are now at step You should five. get emancipated from that D.A.R.E. contract. <laughs> it's really tough, Scott. We could talk about that, but there's a lot of legal red tape to go through. Yeah, at least nine steps. All right, so step five. Step five. Now, I'm in your house. Step five, I'm going to say, point me in the direction of the stank. Okay. That's, so you just, wanna, not, you just want the direction. Yeah, I just want the direction because... <laughs> Because North, east, south, or west. <laughs> just sort of actually hold out two arms and sort of do it at an angle. And I know that the, the mess is within that angle. <laughs> okay, so essentially like a 45 degree or at That's least right. you could maybe widen it out if you put your arms behind your That's back right. to like uh, 190, 200 degrees. Yeah, if degree. you want to really be obtuse with it, you can go ahead and do that. <laughs> sure, of course. So, Scott, at this point, I float off the ground like Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> No way. You love the stank? Yes. You love the stank. Well, see, I don't love the stank. 
But I, you're just I actually have revolted. I'm revolted by the steak. It's just my job is to find it. So I have fine tuned myself. So, so I what's, float. what step number is this that you're floating off the ground? This six, is six, Scott. Six. This is six. This is okay. number six, Scott. Now, of course, I float my way. Now, typically, we're getting to a bathroom, Scott. And sure. typically, there's shit everywhere. Typically. <laughs> so, Why? Why? <laughs> you would be surprised. You know, you're not calling a plumber for like a simple clog. Like you're calling a plumber for what like an act of God has gone down. The house, you know, <laughs> you know I, I, I wanted to say that I think a plumber would, you know, and, and I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but I think a plumber could advertise as like the no judgment plumber. You know how like, right, right, you know, right. you're ashamed when you call a plumber mm-hmm, because of what they're mm-hmm. going to find in there, you know? Well, Scott, I could advertise that because one of my steps is I, I, one of my steps is to disassociate. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you're outside of your body. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot take the smell or like the looking at even talking about poop or anything like that. I will, <laughs> You've been doing it now for, <laughs> for the puke. past 15 minutes. I'll puke. So when it comes down to the time to actually clean, I disassociate. But before we get there, Scott, <laughs> before we get there, I'm of course going to hop in their shower. Oh, okay. Wait, you want to, yeah. So yeah. that's step. So step seven. Step, step six seven. Is you find yeah. the the shitty bathroom. Step six is I float like Pebble Le Pew to the shitty bathroom. Step seven, hop right on in the shower, and of course I'll use whatever they have in there. Garnet few teas. You don't uh, bring your own stuff, yeah? No, we, no, no. Dove body wash. You know, if even sure. if they have like a sort of like a manlier one that's like an sure. axe. You know, these are the axe. things that can be found in other people's bathrooms. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So God, you did com- you know that I wrote a magazine article that is ten things your crush might have in their bathroom? <laughs> oh no, I didn't realize you wrote that. <laughs> I, I don't know why I would have. It's a real manageable number too. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, I don't know that I necessarily want to hear all 10, but uh, we can circle back around yeah, we uh, if we have time at the end of the show. <laughs> but we are we are at step seven. And of course, I am re-showering, which is, of course, sure. rubbing to off. To get that X, the, X body spray off. Got to get the X body spray off. Because you want the X body spray mm-hmm. when you go to the door because right. you want to smell good for the humans. Right. But you don't want to leave the X body spray smell there. Because some people might consider that a stank, Scott. I don't know who, but yeah. I don't think some crazy people. But, you know, Scott, I, I shower again. I wash up all those smells. I don't need my smell heightened as much anymore. And I hop out of the shower, Scott. I look down at the shit everywhere. Is this and where I, the disassociating comes? And, of course, I disassociate, Scott. <laughs> and, and that's why it's step eight, because I disassociate. That's how I remember it. Oh, okay. So, th- so it's hard to remember without. It's hard that? to remember that you always disassociate when you do plumbing. <laughs> like, what's step forget? eight? I've I've just showered. What is step oh, eight again? Right, I disassociate, and then I start <laughs> looking around, and things get blurry, and then I sort of fall over and hit my head on the side of the sink. <laughs> oh God! Wait, is this step step nine? Is no, this is step nine? eight. Still, no, step, step eight is disassociate. Step nine is hit your head on the side of the oh, sink. Oh, okay. That's a huge. That's a huge part of it. Okay, uh, well, that's all the steps there are. No, but there's 11, Scott, because we were going to Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so two more steps. So step 10 is wake up and hope the bathroom is cleaned. <laughs> okay, well, how Dang. often, what percentage of the time is it clean? 100%, Scott, it's my guarantee. I, I don't no. know what it is about me, but once I disassociate the bathroom, I'm I'm unclogging drains, I'm pulling out hair. Oh, okay, from- so you, you're waking up and you've done the work, I guess. I've done all the work. I, I my- thought you meant that when you woke up, you hoped the <laughs> owner came in <laughs> no 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 like I, I i do a lot of the work but i'm i'm sort of drooling and bleeding out of the side of my ear and i sort okay. of clean things up and then of course scott in the event that the bathroom is not clean step 11 i will burn the residents to the ground <laughs> oh okay <laughs> how many times has that happened well you know scott i'd say it happens around you know once or twice a month <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay because some- is that part of the contract they sign when you oh uh, yeah if you want the Mike Ruby guarantee, you got to be okay with the chances, <laughs> the one in 10 chance that I will have to burn your house to the ground because quite honestly, it's just too far gone. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that so, is the sort of Mike, the, the, the Mike Ruby 11 steps of, of no stank plumbing, Scott. So what I've noticed is there's no mm-hmm. step 12 of you going back home. So you're just chilling there after that? No, no, no. Or? So what I do is then I, I sort of try to assume that I live in this house because <laughs> it's going to be really hard for me to leave again without doing the whole shower and, and x and yeah, spray it, thing. And so many steps. So. so I live there and I just forward all my business calls to this new address. <laughs> and oftentimes the people who live there 
there when they came into the bathroom and they saw me bleeding from the head. They're like, we got to get out of here. So this guy, they're going to blame us for this guy's murder. And then I end up taking over the house. You know? Oh, OK. Wow. Mike's. Uh, that's a, a very complicated process. But it sure uh, is, Scott. Are we ready for another commercial? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Go ahead. <laughs> That, that's not an orchestra, by the way, Randy. What? It sounds like it. Oh, my God. Well, it was the 4th of July, and me and my girlfriends were having a barbecue. But we invited too many of the men over, if you know what I mean. That means the toilet was clogged up with shit. <laughs> And I called this asshole named Randy, and I asked him, hey, can you get the shit out of my toilet? And he said stuff like, bleh, bleh, bleh. He didn't even know. But then I called Mike Ruby. Hi, I'm Mike Ruby, the no-stank plumber. I guarantee, say it with me, I will fix any bathroom situation with zero stank. <sighs> We're not going to give you the run around with whether it's going to stink or not, because it's not. It's the Mike Ruby guarantee. Mike Ruby guarantee may include you having to burn your house down. Hashtag <laughs> no stank. Wow, that's pretty good. Wow. Stuff. Wow. wow. Dang. Those girls Ooh. sounded hot, and there was a huge <laughs> crowd involved. <laughs> Yeah, Again, exactly. he could have picked any name but Randy, but yeah. hey, you got to give it up. Go back. <laughs> yeah, that commercial was shot before a live studio audience, actually. <laughs> wow, the entire thing. <laughs> and they were totally silent until... Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. nothing really interesting happened until Mike Ruby comes out, you know. Yeah. Where, I also you know, so noticed uh, mm -hmm. quite a lot of cursing in that one. <laughs> where, where does that run? That one's on satellite radio on Howard Stern's. Network. Oh, okay. That's you can right. say whatever you want, Scott, without getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> cancel culture is that yes. a problem in the plumbing community as oh big of a problem God. as it is out here it's a huge problem I, let me tell you what gets you canceled as a plumber scott having your butt crack out oh man oh, no. let me tell you something if your butt crack is out scott <laughs> you will get canceled scott i did see i think there's there's a, a plumber here in town that promises that the plumbers aren't going to have their butt cracks out he is and i'll tell you what this guy his name is mike diamond and we oh, have yes. we have a huge <laughs> that's right it's <laughs> almost like you're a parody of him no 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 <laughs> we have this guy have a huge fall we've had a huge fall of guys scott because <laughs> oh, okay first of all mike ruby i've been operating in the greater los angeles area for i don't know 20 decades <laughs> 20, 200 time. years. It's, it's a family business, Scott. Oh, I see. Okay, so many generations. Many generations. This asshole comes around talking about he's the no-smell plumber. I don't even know what that means. You don't want any good smells? Idiot. <laughs> so you're the no-stank plumber. I'm the, so. the no-stank plumber. I have no interactions with Mike Dive. I don't even know who that guy is, to be honest. So you had a falling out, but you've never had any interaction. I had a falling out, basically, just like legally, like nonstop getting papers and people are like, are you this business? And, you know, that kind so of he's, thing. So he's been serving you legal papers? He's or? serving me legal papers because he says I'm sort of infringing on his sort of clean cut, you know. Because uh -huh. look, he, he, this guy says, oh, none of the plumbers are going to have their ass cracks out. Whose idea was that? Me. That I, was sewed up the, I sewed up the top of my ass crack two years ago, Scott. <laughs> oh, you did? So you have no ass crack? So it's just, it's like mm -hmm. a Ken doll down there? It's it is like, like a Ken doll. A reverse right Ken doll. Up, it's like a Ken doll right until you get to the butthole. <laughs> okay. And then so there's like a where your hair butthole. is. That is where my hair is. That's where my butthole is actually existent. Where poop uh, uh, comes out, I can't even talk about <laughs> okay, it. Okay, yeah. you're in the wrong line of business. I gotta. Say. What do you mean, Scott? <laughs> I mean, you're good at what you do. Obviously, I'm fucking great at what I do, Scott. Hashtag CBB. If you go to <laughs> Mike Mike Ruby, the dot no com. <laughs> Why are you hashtagging at CBB? That's my hashtag. Oh, interesting. That's, that's so. That's bad. <laughs> oh, I guess it's more like a promo code. Promo code CBB. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Randy, you have any, any need for a, a plumber like this? I mean, yeah, every, every single day. Cause anytime <laughs> I take a poop, I disassociate and then I fall off. I hit my head on the tub and I poop all over the bathroom. <laughs> oh okay. no. So you no. have that too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It sounds like a lot of your clients have exactly that. Yeah. You want to know how I learned how to do this is that I was at home. I would be taking a poop. I'd disassociate. I'd wake up. My bathroom would be covered in shit. And then, of course, I had to learn wow. how to clean it while disassociated. So, sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if you're looking for a job, you know, I might be able to train you up, become the next Mike Ruby. 
I mean, I would love to join the team. Necessity is the mother of all inventions, and I'm not mm-hmm. going to stop shitting all over my bathroom anytime <laughs> soon. Okay, that's pretty good. That's so pretty your good. business has been in the family for many generations. You don't that's have right. any heirs that you can pass it on to? Oh, well, Scott, I got a lot of relationship hangups. I'm not good at, <laughs> you know, to be honest, I, I, I have problems when it comes to women, Scott. Really? Well, you know That's what? True. We have we have a uh, a guest coming up on the show who can maybe really? help you with that. Yeah, we have a, a world renowned therapist coming up on the show. I knew I came here for a reason, Scott. I knew God <laughs> I, delivered me to this podcast because I, I thought, thought it was just thought, to do two of your ads podcast? on the show. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, am I going to do some ads or maybe I'll talk about the 10 things your crush might have in their bathroom. No, we'll but get to, to those, honest, definitely, if we ever run out of steam on this. <laughs> but the reason I came here was to get some relationship advice, Scott. I'm ready. Well, you're in luck because uh, we, we have to take a break. But when we come back, we'll have a therapist here. And uh, Randy, I think I know you need it, but uh, it seems to me like Mike Ruby over here. Who is not to be confused with Mike Diamond, definitely. No, no, I don't know. Who, who is who also is not guy? to be, Mike Diamond is not to be confused with the Beastie Boys Mike Diamond either, because that's what confuses me. I'm always like, so the Beastie Boys break up and he gets into plumbing? It's crazy. And then also Mike Diamond looks exactly like Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> so it's, it's, very it's nuts. Confusing. The whole situation. And you, you look I like. I look like a really, really old, old monk with long, long hair down to the ground. That's right. The TV show monk, we should say. Tony Shalhoub. Yes, I look like Tony Shalhoub with a big beard. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we're going to come right back. When we come back, the world-renowned therapist Diana Deep will be with us. Obviously, you guys know who she is. Uh, so uh, we'll get all of our problems ironed out. When we come back, we'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we are back here. We have Randy Snuts here uh, uh, of uh, the of Sheboygan, I guess. Uh, uh, are you are you out there in Sheboygan right now? Yeah, currently that's where Mark Padovano stays at. <laughs> that's right. So just about three blocks from Carissa's place, and uh, we also have Mike Ruby, the no stank plumber here. Who? Oh, oh my god, my toilet. <laughs> See, I got you guys. I'm just like It's not your toilet. It's actually uh Mike. I'm just doing like a Mike sound Yep. Um and uh before the break, Mike Ruby told us that uh some shocking news that he has problems with women. Uh, mm-hmm. And we didn't get into it because I wanted to save our next guest for that. Um, and Randy, you already have established you have problems with one woman in particular and uh, perhaps other women, uh, even though you've been ex- uh, in exclusive relationship with uh, Carissa here for approximately uh, six to eight years or so. Yeah, I got problems all over the place, though. That's right. Yeah. So we, we don't have to focus just on the, the Carissa problems because you have many and a multitude of problems. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, would you say you have 99 problems and women are most of them? Yep, absolutely. And Chris is out of my life. Otherwise, it would be 100. (laughs) Well, uh, we want to bring her on the show. You know her as uh, one of the most famous therapists to, I guess, to ever live uh, and uh, hopefully not die. But, uh, you know, uh, apparently, although I've... You know, I don't know that I'm going to die. I've never seen any evidence that I am going to, but... uh, (laughs) But uh, uh, I don't know why we got on her dying here, but she is one of the most famous therapists to ever live. And she has her own podcast where she helps couples and people out with their problems called Going Deep with Diana Deep. And hopefully she'll help uh, our guests out here with some of their problems. Please welcome to the show for the first time, therapist Diana Deep. Thank you, Scott, for that truly messed up introduction. About I'm death. sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I brought that up, but I, uh, you know, I mean. Really dark. Well, it, you know, I, I don't know why I even said you're one of the most famous therapists to ever live. I mean, like, of I course y- you are, but of course, all other therapists who have been famous have lived as well. Is that f- safe to say? All other therapists who have been famous have lived. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so every ther- every therapist from famous to non-famous has been alive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um well, let me just start by saying, Scott. Um, do, do you want to do you want us to uh, erase everything that uh, we said before you came on here? Because it seems like you're trying to move on very quickly. Yeah, I'm trying to move on, Scott, because <laughs> okay. you're trying to talk about death, and we can get there. Clearly, you have some damage. Is that is that a subject matter uh, that you try to stay away from in your therapy? I would think it would come up every once in a while. Yeah, of course it comes up. Comes yeah. up a lot with sex. Hmm. Comes up with. Um, 
They're inexorably linked, aren't they? Sex and death. They are. Because you want them to happen at the same time? <laughs> no, no, but some say uh, the, the orgasm is the little death, as they call it. Wow, no kidding. It's How many the killing little of the soul. <laughs> I've had little, f- five uh, little deaths today, I believe. <laughs> so uh, put them all together wow. and maybe I'm, I might be close. Is that why you look like the crib keeper? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what's interesting is that Scott, you were saying that me and Randy were the ones that needed therapy, but it's like I don't know. Diana sort agree. of she's sort of tuning into you right away. Scott. I think Scott needs it the most. Scott's clearly the most fucked up. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why you say that. Just because I bungled your introduction, uh, because I got in my head about why did I say you know that you were one of the most famous to ever live. You know, and I went down the rabbit hole that way. I don't think I'm fucked up. You started talking about your own death. When you were introducing me, so clearly there's some damage there. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Okay, yeah, Scott, but- you at, Scott, you at least need a glass of water if you cranked your jock five times already today. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I cranked it? You said you did. You said you no. got little deaths already today. So someone else cranked it. Oh, oh, oh. Now, now we got to brag and keep score. <laughs> I'm married. Wow, Good for you. this is telling. So he's uh, he's having to scream that he's married, which I feel like is telling. Is that right, Diana? <laughs> Good point, Mike. I, I do. I think, you know, he's, I mean, he's he's damaged. Mm. You can tell. Okay, look, let's let's turn the spotlight away from <laughs> yeah, me. You know and, what? And... Let's turn the spotlight away from you. I want all, just all your listeners um, to go ahead and turn off this podcast. Turn off this one? Turn it off. Oh. And search Going uh, Deep with Diana Deep. You haven't even... And go ahead and press play. Mm -hmm. And I think think you'll be happy, happier than than listening to this. Okay, so (laughs) I I don't know that... Look, I hate to have people with other podcasts on this show in the first place. Because I don't... I don't... It's just bad business to have podcast hosts on this show. Uh, I mean, look what happened with Conan O'Brien. He's on this show... Suddenly, he's the most popular podcaster in the world, being nominated for all these awards in the top 10 all the time, just from him advertising it on this show. So I don't know. I, you know, I don't so like are you having jealous of that. I don't begrudge him for it. I mean, he's trying to express himself. He's an artist. You know, I just I don't know why I gave him the, the CBB bump that I did to make him the most popular podcaster. Yeah, And you're taking credit for all of that. I mean, I deserve the credit. I don't know that I'm taking it. I'm being given it by myself. Sure. Wow, Diana, you're a, you're scribbling down a lot. Like you have been writing nonstop since Scott has started talking. Like, is there a lot of like important notes down there? Like, what do you sort of? Keep yeah, down? no, I write in um, I write in this big Manila folder. It's just a folder. <laughs> just an open write. folder, no paper in there. So I cover it, and um, and then, at, but at the end, I light it on fire. Mm, it's mm. part of the healing I, I, process. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. One of the last steps of of me doing any plumbing sure. is step look 11. around if it's clean. <laughs> step eleven. I look around if it's if it's not clean. I burn it to the ground. So I understand that impulse. I understand that. You know, I was thinking about you, Mike, when I was listening to you talk, and who, who, who me? I was realizing. I think did something traumatic happen with poop for you when you were little? Did you walk in? I think in traumatic on things have happened to him while he's been an adult with poop. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like on, every on job he has. Did, did you walk, walk in, in on someone pooping? Was okay, it- so I didn't want to talk about this, but when I was a child, I was playing in the front yard of my Aunt Wendy's house. And she said, go pick up that stick over there. Whoa, it's almost like she's here. Go pick up that stick over there. Young Ruby. Voice. So she I walked you by over. your last name. They call me Young Ruby. It's part of the family tradition. So I walked over to what I thought was a stick, and I picked it up, and I started waving it around like it was a sword, and I started hitting my cousins with it. And I started throwing it around, and as as it disintegrated in my hand, I realized it was shit. <gasps> I and mean, then, I saw that. I saw that coming right away. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, I should have seen it. Wow, really I did not M. Night see Shyamalan that coming. style. Sort of twist. not a twist. It's not a twist. But I had already sort of licked my hands and like sort of done a lot oh. of really oh, gross God. stuff. Yeah. So, so yeah, maybe that's my trauma. Also, I, I watched my dad die at a human waste uh, facility where he died <laughs> in a, a giant vat of shit. 
Because so you can't so, swim yeah. in it. The the volume is so that you have to sink. It's like shit sand, they call it. Sort of like a biff in Back to the Future when that yes. truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is that the trauma maybe? I think that is the trauma, you know, and that might have a, a bit to do with how you relate to women because we all, mm. all of the way, all of our sexual experiences tie back to how our parents died mm. and death oh. in general, back to death. Wow. So, what if what if my parents are still with us? So what do my sexual experiences relate back to? So, I mean, really, you haven't even begun to have sexual experiences. Oh, so... God, I so all kinda, that cranking you were talking about. That I wasn't talking about that. <laughs> Bringing how up you cranking, were saying that you'd been cranking it all day. Five or six cranks, you know. That you so call me even Jason begun. Statham because I'm the king of the crank. He said. <laughs> no, we didn't call Jason Statham the king of the cranks. <laughs> well, you said you wanted that. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're a crank yanker, Scott. It's written all over your face. You're bouncing around like a muppet, telling people that you're yanking, but you got nothing down there to yank because you're a muppet. Is that what you're saying, Diana? Yeah, that's exactly. That's Scott's exactly got a Muppet it. wiener. <laughs> For me, you know, my um, my sexual experiences um, all tie back to how I watched my father die in the Alps. He, oh, um, I'm so he sorry. You watched your dad die too? Oh, yeah. He nice. fell off of a chairlift onto a bunch Whoa. of little little skiers. Whoa, little in terms of like they looked little when he was up in the chairlift, and then once he got down to them, they were his size. Or no, they were just small, mm. oh. small children people. or adults. Or but they short, were, you know, they adult. were shorter, five two mm-hmm. to five, five two, six, four eleven, maybe. Yeah, maybe one or two. And he just fell. Why were they all hanging out together? Is that like <laughs> short people like to hang out with each other? Or it was a club. It was a club. Oh, it was a club. Short skiing club or something like that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so how does this manifest itself sexually for you? So for me, usually I come the quickest when I'm with short men. Oh. Dang, okay. lucky them. That's and, pretty easy. And that's it's cold. Tight. And it, when it's cold. Oh, it's got to be cold as well. Yeah. Mm, you know, okay. ideally it's winter. Interesting. Okay, Interesting. so it's seasonal for you. It is seasonal. I don't come in the summer. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's, wow. I so guess like, that's pretty cool to know that you just don't even have to like really put any effort in, you know. The yeah. So here in Feby W, you, you're in hog heaven at this point. This is <laughs> this is me? your time to shine. More like piglet heaven. <laughs> Wait, okay, Randy. With, with these with these little guys, these cold little fellows, <laughs> these little piglets <laughs> poking calling, their little poking their tiny little tails into Diana. Don't, we don't need to call short men. Have you piglets. ever heard of? Have you ever seen a pig dick before? <laughs> It looks yeah, like a corkscrew. Yeah, it's like a corkscrew. It looks like a long, weird corkscrew. Yeah, Beaujolais, if you know what I mean. I, Diana, can I, I tell something you? going on with you guys? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, every time we look away, you guys are sort of your... I feel like if you guys were sitting under a table, your feet would be playing under the table. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You Randy. guys aren't in the same room, are you? I mean, we're, we're both on two different Zooms, but, uh, you know. I don't know, Randy. Where are you? I'm at Mark Padovano's house. <laughs> I said that. You had to establish Gannon by now. Yeah. I listened. No, I listened. I listened. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Then make me repeat myself. Don't make me. Re- oh, yeah. You Wait, want me no. to make you? No, Go you ahead. already repeat did. I'm at, I'm at Mark Padovano's house. Hey, Scott, what the hell's going on here? What is happening? This is crazy. There's Why a lot is- of like, fun. There's some fun sexual tension happening, but I don't know if it's intentional, if this is a yeah. therapy sort of thing that you're doing. I don't, I don't know, but I'm just, I'm going to extricate Mark? myself. Where's Mark right now? I don't know. He's out. He's out at his job. He's making ads. Oh, is he? Is he? Or is he with Carissa? Stop. Scott, stop. Stop cranking. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm not cranking. Scott, are you cranking it right no, now? No, he started to, but I think he stopped. Scott. No, I'm itchy. I'm itchy. It's just an itch down there. <laughs> yeah, right. You're scratching the itch. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell Diana that Mark is probably, you know, I don't know, six things deep in Carissa right now. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Six things deep. Can I ask you a question, <laughs> Diana? Because I'm as confused as Please. anyone. But like, so I we I feel like we all have a Carissa situation, you know, like that person that you need to get out of your life, you know. Amen. And okay. like, what is it that we have to heal within ourselves in order to be strong enough to release these strings? You know what I mean? Well, first of all, I think most men are the weak link. In the male-female relationship. <laughs> okay, that's pretty fucked up. <laughs> that's Harsh, pretty weird. Maybe fair. 
They're, Pretty weird. They yeah. are the dumb ones. They're the most damaged. They're the least likely to grow. So hey, all right. Hey, that was my senior senior superlative. <laughs> least likely to grow. Does that mean you're pretty short, Randy? <laughs> no, you're just my... most likely to show. <laughs> show out to grow out. That's what I say. Hmm. Interesting. Carissa, then Carissa usually hangs up on me. I think you know, with you and Carissa, if I'm being honest, you know, maybe maybe it's not that it's about your relationship, but it's about it's actually between her and Mark, and you happen to be the one that she cheats on him with. Have you ever thought about it like that, Randy? No, I haven't. You know, I'm not one who naturally gravitates toward confidence, and that would probably give me a lot more confidence if I'm being honest. If I'm the bad boy in this little love triangle. You like to be the bad boy. I mean, yeah, I am a bad boy. That was my other senior superlative. Least likely to grow and baddest boy. (laughs) Scott, I feel like every time she starts talking, she like starts... Like her bra strap starts to show a little bit. Yeah, she like shows a little bit more shoulder. Like, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, what's going on? I mean, yeah, she's. Yeah, you are a bad boy. Oh, yeah. Just ignoring oh, us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very strange. Oh, Dang, it's almost I'll, as if they're, you, they're the same place. Five, 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 six. What? No, I'm five, ten and a half, normal size. Uh, uh, oh, that's not going to be good. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, no, not Diana, interested anymore. She's not interested. Okay. All right, hey. Diana. So here's my here's my problem with women. I, I want to bring you in on this. So so I meet a woman out in the wild. I'll Just be at a one? bar. I'm sure there's many. Go ahead. I don't even. What are you? Come on, <laughs> give me a chance. I'm a good guy. Okay. So I'll meet a woman. I'll be in the park and I'll be like, oh, you know, that woman has a cute dog. You know, and I'll walk over and be like, oh, cute that's dog. what attracts you to a woman is how their dog looks. Yeah. yeah. You you might. Be attracted to dogs. Scott, come No shame on. in that game. <laughs> and Randy. I'm not going to be the no judgment therapist when it comes to that. I feel like yeah. there is shame in that game, to be honest, Randy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. As a Catholic, no shame in that game. <laughs> so, okay. So well, I mean, I guess they do say that dogs look like their owners. So you notice the dog first and go, boy, if that was a human. And then you look up at the human and exactly. it looks like the dog. So, and I'm okay. a personality boy, guy, you know. If the dog has a cute personality, I'm like, oh, you must be getting that from somewhere, you know. So I look up. I'm like, oh, that'd be cute. <laughs> Why don't you just... Engage the woman and see how her personality is first. Is this my problem? Am I engaging people's dogs before I engage Let them? me ask you. Let me ask you. Is the yeah. dog shitting when you see the dog? Oh. Something. To be honest, it, there's like a 35% chance the dog is shit. Because if people That's usually why dogs dog, are outside. Exactly. Yeah. They're out there to either shit or walk. And sometimes when they're walking, it's like the shit happens no matter what, you know? Yeah, but so are you attracted when you see the shit? No! I'll tell you what I do is as soon as I meet a woman and I'm like, okay, we are... We're hitting it off slightly. I will say, hey, don't move. I'll be right back. I get my car, drive home, jump right in the shower. And <laughs> Why don't you before, shower before you go to the park? I did. Or of course I did, Scott. But now we got to start fresh, you know, fresh okay. new relationship. Right. So I shower. I start exfoliating. Of course, I use my Garnet Fructis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get proactive solution. I rub it right in my butthole, Scott. Sure. And then the Toms of Maine, right? The Toms of Maine. I use that for my underarms, some of my hairier bits. And then I get back and then they're, go- they're normally not there. <laughs> I see. So. What's the what's the issue? Do you think, uh, Doctor Deep? Well, what's I mean, there seems problem? to be an obsession with being clean, mm-hmm. which you know, I I I grew up in parts of Europe and and right. um, over there, everyone's just not quite as obsessed with being clean as Americans are. Mm. You know, Americans are covering themselves in bleach. You know, and you're saying this could be related to me watching my di- my dad die in human shit at a water tra- water uh, treatment facility. I think oh. there's something there. I don't know what it is, but I yeah. think there's something. Yeah, it's all I'm coming gonna, together. I'm going to have to work through some of this. This is good stuff. I can't. Uh, thank you so much. This is good. This is good. Did, did well, that I don't help know that we you? I mean, quite yet. I, well, right I mean, now, Scott, you can see a single tear running from my eye. And normally it's all the way down the hair all the way down on your beard, hair. all the way you down know, to the Scott, penis hole, all you the way what? to my penis hole. And the second it's I like start a water crying, slide, Scott, I normally will run to the shower, Scott, to get clean. But I think no. I've got something for you, Mike. We're going to do a little role play. OK, I'm a woman. Oh, great. I could do a lot of sound effects, voice. You want me to be the woman? No, I'm the woman. OK, OK. I'm the woman. You're yourself. I cool. don't have a dog. No Force. dog. How about yeah, Scott? Scott well, yeah, what do we do? The dogs. Yeah, could yeah. Scott be one of the dogs, and then maybe Snuts could be a passing dog that's like, oh, it's a hot dog. They could have their own little thing going on. You guys want to be in the skit? We're here. Yeah. We're, <laughs> you're just going to ignore us. We're not what? invisible. These guys need therapy, too. You guys can be... Um, I know. We'll be at a restaurant, and you guys, one of you can be a waiter, and the other one can be a waiter in training. Oh, okay. Am I shadowing him? You're shadowing him. 
but Great. but he's the waiter in training. Why am I shadowing him? <laughs> because you're both new. Oh, cool! But Scott's so we're probably, supposed to figure it out. We've been new, thrown into the you, deep end. Randy's been there one day more, so oh. he knows a little bit more than you do. Okay, but nice. you're both new. Okay, okay. Right. okay. Hey, Scott, that's your wait, name, wait, right? We just wait, met? wait. Before we even start, are we meeting in this restaurant? Are we on a date? Because I don't normally get to restaurants with these women. Yes, we're on it. We're on a date. Okay. So okay. this is to get make sure that you'll have confidence. So this is second you base for you. Date because okay. I think once you have that confidence, you can ask a woman out. Okay. okay. No, this so, is actually third base for me, Scott. For, uh, first okay. base would be a shower. Second base, touch. <laughs> okay. Third base restaurant. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here we go. We're we're out on hi, our what, date. Hi. What's your name again? Excuse me. I'm not talking to you, ma'am. I'm talking to my <laughs> waiter that's training me. Oh. It's Randy. Don't disrespect me. I've been here a day longer than you. What the fuck's your problem, dude? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look, what are we supposed to do today? Marry oh. ketchups or what do we do? <laughs> no, we'll marry ketchups at the end of the shift or unless the bottles get empty. Look, we just need to go up to this table and ask these people what they'd like for dinner. And if they need more time, that's fine. We can come back. Okay. It sounds complicated, but I, I, I'm with you. Have you ever been to a restaurant before? <laughs> no. That's got, this was so exciting to get a job at this place I've never been in. Yeah, and no seen. So Mike, how do you feel? Do you feel better? <laughs> you feel I, like you I, could do this? I, I'll say this. I was I was the entire time gripping my seat because I wanted to get up and run home to my shower. But I stood there. I stayed in the pocket. I let those people argue around me. <laughs> I feel like that was a major breakthrough, Diana. Oh, it was. was. Well, let's try another one here, Mike. Okay. Woo! Okay. Who so, are we? Who are you? So me and you, Mike, we we just went out to dinner, okay. and now we are in. Now you're sliding into home, and you're feeling all that foam. <laughs> no, we're going. We're going out for a movie. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've just I don't know gotten what that to is. the is that theater. In between, that's like a pickle in between third base and home plate. Yeah, that's like you're caught between the shortstop and the third baseman, and you're like, oh, God, I don't know how to. Yeah, you're in a pickle okay. play right now. It's a rundown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and who squeeze are we? Squeeze play. It's a squeeze play, if you will. Okay, so um, we've just gotten Can to the Can I be a projectionist? Theater. No, you guys work at the no? snack booth. You guys work at the snack booth. Okay. The booth? And uh, you both... Is this you like a are... kiosk inside the movie theater where we're Snack like... Snack booth. Okay. I'm just wondering because sometimes like you go to the Arclight, there's like a coffee kiosk or whatever. Arclight. This... I just think if you would just listen to her and give her a chance, I feel like she could be helping you because she's All doing right. wonders for me right now. All right. This, All right. This is back, you know, this is back when there were people, humans who worked at the movie theater. And you're going, we're going to go order some snacks. Okay. So we're, this is back in were... time. This is like 2019. <laughs> This is 2019. Okay. okay. All right. So all right. Well, I know what a snack booth is. So clearly I've been working there a little longer than Scott. <laughs> You've been working there a day longer than Scott. Okay. So, but okay. in, in this case, Scott, you yeah. guys have, you guys have been working there for two weeks and Randy's okay. been working there for two weeks and a day. Two weeks and one day. Okay. Okay. All right. In 2019. All right. <sighs> all right. Hi, Randy. Did uh, you hear that those North Korea, U.S. nuclear talks stalled? Yeah, no kidding. I listen to all the classic news podcasts first thing in the morning. Look yeah. at all the shit all over the cash register. What did yeah. you do here? Oh, sorry. I just I was thinking about how the U.S. China trade war is continuing. <gasps> yeah, and no I and, and <laughs> tensions are flaring in the Persian Gulf. All this is stuff is going on in the world, and what? I just took my mind off of the ball. I guess. And, Okay, and scene. Okay, I didn't make it through that one. I had to run home and take a shower. Mm. There was shit. Uh, there was shit on the cash register. No one was acknowledging it. Well, what about the shit was upsetting to you? Normally, there is, you know, there's going to be shit out in the world, right? Wow. wow. Hopefully, and they would hide it a little bit. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. Every once in a while, you're walking along, and someone <laughs> didn't pick up their dog's poop, but you know, I mean, hopefully, or there's human he, shit. Hopefully, human shit is. Behind partitions. And, Guys, we got to you know. stop talking about oh, oh, I'm getting sick. We can't keep talking about this. Woo. Okay. Wow. I, I, I do think those role plays were helping, Diane. I, I, I do feel like I will be able to talk to a woman for maybe a few sentences before I feel dirty and need to run home and exfoliate. Well, that's good. I think I, 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 think I helped a lot. 
I think I did a great job. And, you know, I think you helped me and Randy here kind of patching up our relationship, you know. I mean, uh, sort of like the tables really did turn with us where suddenly you were the dominant one, Randy, and it really felt good. Yeah, it felt great to dominate Scott. Yeah, Scott, do you like to be dominated? (laughs) I mean, I don't like it necessarily. Seems like Uh, you get a lot of people on here who dominate you. I, I tend to think that I'm the one dominating them when they're on the show, you know? I mean, I don't uh, know. I don't no, know if no. I agree. I, I think Scott's right. He's a power bottom. <laughs> Not like notorious power bottom Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay. <laughs> you there. Not- what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's Christmas, sir. Ah, the perfect day to power bottom you. <laughs> the one as big as me? <laughs> Hey Scott, um, you, what, what's your height? You're famously tall, right, Scott? I well, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sort of six two, six three, yeah. Mm, mm, and how? Mm, what's no your height? We didn't talk. I mean, we've talked about the length of your hair, but we haven't yeah. talked about how tall you are. I'll be honest. I grow my hair really long to sort of hide how short I am. You know, Scott. Oh, how that's short a, are you? That's that's what they tell you to do. They, they tell me long. to grow your hair long so that people are like, oh, that guy's at least five feet. Yeah, because sometimes you can hairspray it up, sort of like mm-hmm. a flock of seagulls or a French Stewart. And sometimes if you let your beard get like long enough and then really get it tight with some hairspray, you can walk on top of it, give you like a one inch platform, you know, Scott. Yeah, yeah, I guess. How yeah. short are we talking about? How short are you? Well, I am what they call four eleven and a half. It's what oh, they call Yeah. What what was that? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh-oh. Do you get some? Are you getting some sort of therapy thing where you're sort of like, yeah, you're writing something down about my my sort of psyche? Is that what you write? My vanilla envelope is full. Oh, well, Scott, are you seeing this? <laughs> I don't know what what are you seeing? Are maybe? you seeing this tension? It seems like they're in the same room now. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot of people call me a short king. Is that something that you're <laughs> interested in? <laughs> I love a little king. A little king. Okay. Little. All right. Look, Short I, little king. I, I do have to warn you, my job involves a lot of head injuries and a lot of <laughs> shit and a lot of forgetting stuff. So a relationship with me is going to be a whirlwind. I just Yeah, are you sure that you haven't been in a relationship at this point? I mean, you may have just hit your head so many times you can't recall it. Two women claim to be married to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will not. I don't even. I'm not going to acknowledge that at all. <laughs> I say they were clients. I was just there cleaning their bathroom, and then I left. You know. <laughs> uh, well, guys, this this has been incredible. Wait, hold on, what Scott, an incredible we experience. Get to one really important thing, Scott. What's that? Ten things you're crushed. No, by we don't have. <laughs> look, we we have time for one final feature, and that is a little something called plugs. 